My name is Ali Vesli. I'm going to present to you part one of the chapter about magnetic circuits. In this part, I will make a brief introduction and then present the IH and BH relations, which are actually the relations between the electric current I and the magnetic field intensity H, and between the magnetic flux density and the magnetic field intensity H. Finally, we'll see how we can get a magnetic equivalent circuit. In all electrical machines, magnetic materials are used to shape and direct magnetic fields that act as a medium in the energy conversion process. A major advantage of using magnetic material in electrical machines is the fact that high flux density can be obtained in the machine, which results in large torque or large machine output per unit machine volume. In electrical machines, the magnetic circuits may be formed by ferromagnetic materials only, as in transformers, or by ferromagnetic materials in conjunction with an air medium, as in rotating machines. Electrical machines, except permanent magnet machines, the magnetic field or flux is produced by passing an electric current through coils wound on ferromagnetic material. We shall first study how the current in a coil is related to the magnetic field intensity or flux it produces, call it the IH relation. The direction of magnetic flux lines or magnetic field intensity H can be determined by what is known as the thumb rule or right hand grip rule. What you need to do is to use your right hand to grip on the wire where a current is flowing, make sure to point your right thumb in the direction of current flow and then curl your other fingers around the wire. Your fingers now point in the same direction as the circular magnetic field around the conductor. After you determine the direction of the magnetic field, you need to determine its intensity as a function of the current I, so the I H relation. And this is what we are do going to do in the next slides. The relationship between current and field intensity can be obtained by using Ampere's circuit law. This law states that the line integral of the magnetic field intensity H around a closed path is equal to the total current linked by the contour. This figure illustrates the Ampere's circuit law. So the integration of the magnetic field intensity H around the closed path shown in this figure can be expressed as in this equation and is equal to the sum of all currents inside the contour. Note here that the angle theta is the angle between the field vector and the tangent to the contour at a certain portion dl of the contour. That is why the projection of H on the tangent gives H multiplied by cosine theta as shown in this last equation. Now let us consider a particular case where the contour is circular. In this case, at each point of this particular circular contour, H and dL are in the same direction. That is theta equals zero or cosine theta equals one. Because of symmetry, H will be the same at all points of this contour. So we can obtain this equation. Considering the fact that the length of the circular contour is actually the perimeter of the circle, which is equal to 2 pi r, where r is the radius of the circle, then we can obtain this equation. Thus, we can determine the relation of the magnetic field as a function of the current as given by this equation. Notice here that for the same contour, which means same radius, there is a linear relationship between I and H. Now we are going to determine the relationship between the magnetic flux density B and the magnetic field intensity H. We know that the magnetic field intensity H produces a magnetic flux density B everywhere it exists. These two quantities are functionally related by this equation, or this equation. 
where mu is a characteristic of the medium and is called the permeability of the medium. Mu zero is the permeability of free space and is equal to four pi 10 to the power minus seven Henry per meter. And mu r is the relative permeability of the medium. Note that the value of mu zero is constant while mu r depends on the medium and is not constant as we will see in part two of this chapter. When we study the magnetization curve or what is called also pH curve. For free space or electrical conductors, such as aluminum or copper, or insulators, the value of mu r is equal to unity. However, for ferromagnetic materials, such as iron, cobalt, and nickel, the value of mu r varies from several hundred to several thousands. For most of the materials used in electrical machines that we'll study, mu r varies in the range of 2000 to 6000. Note that a large value of mu r implies that a small current can produce a large flux density in the machine. This is an important feature that affects the efficiency of the electric machine because for high relative permeability, we can consume less current for the same desired performance. Now let's see how to obtain the magnetic equivalent circuit of a magnetic structure. We will do that through a simple example of toroid magnetic circuit as shown in this figure. Let's first consider some assumptions in order to simplify the analysis and make it easier for you to understand. We will consider that when current I flows through the coil of N turns, the magnetic flux is mostly confined in the core material, which means that the flux outside the toroid, which is called leakage flux, is so small that for all practical purposes, it can be neglected. Consider a path at a radius R as shown in this figure. The magnetic field intensity on this path is H and from Ampere's law, we can write this equation where HL is equal to NI. Now, if you replace L with two pi R, we can write this equation where the quantity Ni is equal to F and is called the magnetomotive force MMF and its unit is ampere turn. We can also write the magnetic flux intensity H equation as H equals Ni divided by the contour length L and then deduce the equation of the magnetic flux density B as shown by this equation. Now, we know that the magnetic flux in the magnetic core can be determined as the integral of the flux density on the toroid core cross-section A, as shown by this equation. Since the leakage flux is neglected, we can write that the magnetic flux is equal to the flux density multiplied by the core cross-section area A. In this equation, B is the average flux density in the core and A is the area of cross-section of the toroid. Using the expression of the flux density B demonstrated in the previous slides, we can rewrite the flux equation as in this equation, where R is called the reluctance of the magnetic path and is expressed as R equal L divided by mu A or equal one over P where P is called the permeance of the magnetic path. So we can conclude that the magnetic flux is actually the ratio of the MMF over the reluctance. So previous equation suggests that the driving force in the magnetic circuit is the magnetomotive force MMF, which is F equal Ni, which produces a flux phi against a magnetic reluctance R. The magnetic circuit of the toroid can therefore be represented by this magnetic equivalent circuit. This magnetic equivalent circuit reminds us this electric equivalent circuit, where the driving force in the electric circuit is the EMFE, 
which is equivalent to the driving force in the magnetic circuit, the MMFF. These driving forces produce a current I in the electric circuit and the magnetic flux phi in the magnetic circuit, which are limited by the resistance R in the electric circuit and the reluctance R in the magnetic circuit. So the electric conductivity in the electric circuits is equivalent to the magnetic permeability in the magnetic circuits. As you can notice, through this analogy, the electric circuit laws can be applied to the magnetic equivalent circuit. This is the end of this part. Thank you for watching.